one of Kevin's great, great joys was his role as a father. Emily, would you join us, please? It was June 19th, also known as Father's Day. I woke up at noon, as I usually do on the weekends, and thought it would only be appropriate to go down to Barnes & Noble on this particular day, hash it out, and think of all the times my dad and I had in the past 24 years. Of course I've been thinking about my dad's passing every single day since it happened, but it was such a nice day outside, I just wanted to relax, drink some coffee, and think of happy memories with him. For a moment, I just wanted to forget all the negativity surrounding his passing, and everything depressing, and just focus on the good times. How hard could it be? Then I look around and see kids with their moms and dads walking around shopping, doing whatever, and just living their lives. There were young kids with their younger parents, adults with their elderly parents, and everyone just seemed to be having a good day, not a care in the entire world. Then it starts to settle in that this will never be me again. I'll never be able to take my dad out for Father's Day. I won't be able to call him up to talk about the Yankees or get another text message from him asking how Comedy Central is or how perfect the weather is in LA. I'll never be invited to come watch him play. I'll never come over for holiday dinners anymore. I won't be able to recommend books or movies to him anymore. When I'm in town, I won't be able to call him up and ask him to go to lunch with me so I could talk about work or what loser I'm dating or what TV has been good or what TV sucks. So as I sat around looking at all these happy, complete, comfortable families who at that very moment were not thinking about the possibility that their family could suddenly be broken, I became truly sad and confused. Why at 24 am I dealing with this substantial life-altering loss that even some of those much older than me have not yet experienced? The truth is, my dad will never see me get married, will never see me have kids of my own, and will never be able to see me take the next step in my career, something he was always so supportive and encouraging of. Then I started thinking of all the times we had together. As many of you may know, I was a serious basketball player back in my prime. I, I would play year-round with hardly a second to breathe, and for a number of years, basketball was my entire life. My dad would be at every game with a camcorder in hand, sitting in the stands. I would travel to different states for tournaments constantly, and he would try to make every single one of them. I didn't love at the time that he would be sitting there yelling at me, to pass or shoot or whatever and embarrass me from the sidelines completely. <laughs> and of course, this is all caught on tape, so rather than hearing whistles or anything else, you would hear my dad's voice bickering or yelling at me or the ref the entire game. <laughs> Looking back on it now, I know that he just cared and wanted to see me win, succeed, and be happy because he knew how much I loved the sport and how I took basketball and myself very seriously. Then when I got incredibly sick of basketball and having no social life outside of sports, I started listening to the Beatles and immediately wanted a guitar. I quit all of my teams, started doing school plays and hanging out with new people. I took acting classes and basically did a 180 degree turn with my life. And so my dad, the same guy who five minutes before was shooting the ball around with me and talking about college basketball scholarships, bought me my first guitar. He got so into this new me that he would constantly be buying me pedals, cords, strings, literally everything that I needed and more to the point where I probably could have opened up an illegal music store in my room. But, but that was my dad to a T, supportive of absolutely everything I did. He let me live the way I wanted to live and let me make my own decisions. He supported my decision to make my entire life about television at Emerson College, and he more than supported my wanting to move to Los Angeles after graduating from college to pursue a career in it even if that meant only seeing me in grand total of two times a year. He even became the most dedicated hardcore fan in the world of the two shows I worked on in LA, even though one eventually got canceled due to its lack of being a good show, <laughs> while the other one had a fan base of 11-year-old girls. He was also dependable. If I needed to be somewhere, he was the first to jump up and offer to take me. If I needed something done, again, he would be the first to volunteer to do it. He was eager to do everything and anything for me, and he would constantly put my needs before his. And he didn't just do this for me, he did this for everyone in his life. That's the kind of guy he was, the selfless kind you could depend on for absolutely anything in the entire world. About a year or so after moving to LA, I remember my dad coming to visit me. 
I was really excited because no one had visited me yet, and I was excited to show him my apartment and my cat, and for him to visit the Paramount lot where I worked. But upon seeing him at the airport, I noticed something. He looked drained, tired, pale, and just really sick. He didn't look like the vibrant dad I grew up with, and I suspected something was seriously wrong. So he told me that night in my apartment that he had skin cancer, and if you know my dad at all, you know that a doctor wasn't the one to tell him this, it was Google.com. <laughs> Completely freaked out, I called my mom the next day and we got the ball rolling to get him the help and treatment he desperately needed. The skin cancer was unfortunately only the beginning of things we would find out were wrong with my dad. In comparison to everything else, the cancer was just a small hurdle to leap. To be honest with all of you, after he became really sick and started struggling with his illnesses that he'd had for his entire life and that he'd neglected for his entire life, I felt really guilty. It was like here I am in LA where I had been for the past three years of my life, far away from home having fun, working in TV, focusing on my life, and hardly ever calling my dad. And here my dad is suffering and has probably been missing me every single day since I left. Then I moved on to regret. When I got the call that he slipped into unconsciousness a few months ago, I immediately felt like I should have been there. I should have talked to him more. I should have called him more. I should have hugged him more, said I love you more. I've always had trouble expressing my feelings, even to my family, and so when I heard he was unconscious, I just became really upset and wondered if he even knew how I felt about him. I remember being at the airport waiting for my red eye to go back home the day I found out, and never before had I felt so helpless and broken down. The feeling you get when you begin to realize you might be losing your parent is unexplainable. Then I think I just felt anger. Angry that he'd let things go on for so long. Angry that I was so unemotional towards people that I loved. Angry that this was a situation that I couldn't control. Needless to say, I 100% look like a psychopath in the airport. So all of these emotions came rushing into my head, sitting there at the bookstore on Father's Day. And needless to say, I was getting really torn up about the whole thing all over again and was missing him more than ever. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, in his valiant attempt to give my mind peace, his voice came into my head and told me not to be sad anymore. It was then I knew that the last thing my selfless dad would ever want is for us to be upset because he's no longer here. I'm sure he would love to be watching baseball or CNN right now, but he would never want me or any of us to cry over his passing. I think he would actually be happy to see what's going on here right now. All of his friends and family are together in one place, something that has probably never happened when he was alive. Think about it, people flying in from all over the country, friends he hasn't seen in years, are all here right now celebrating his very interesting and very accomplished life. This event has brought many of us together who never would have been brought together. I've become so incredibly close to people I never would have had the pleasure of knowing had it not been for my dad, people who I consider really close friends who will forever be a part of my life. What I'm trying to say is, Maybe instead of purely grieving for this loss, even though that's fine and healthy for us to do, we can try and think about things that have been gained also. My dad has enriched all of our lives in one way or another, which is why all of us are here together right now. I personally think that's something to be thankful for. As much as this sucks right now, and as much as I'm going to mourn and cry, and as much as you all may mourn and cry, I think it's best to focus on how much he's forever affected our lives during his time here, and especially how much he unconditionally loved all of us. I have to say it's ironic to me that his heart, <laughs> the one thing that evidently brought us here to this memorial, is also the one thing we all loved most about him. All of us here can agree on a few things. He was a great musician, a great friend, and a great dad, but most importantly, he was a great person with a heart bigger than any room he walked into. <laughs> the, last time I saw, <laughs> the last time I saw him was the same day I flew back to LA after Memorial Day weekend. I had a strange feeling it might be the last time I would ever see him, and as I looked at him that day, it was almost as if he knew this too. I remember right before I left the room, I told him I was going to make him really proud of me, something I'll probably remember for the rest of my life. What I meant by this was, I'm going to succeed and be happy in my career and do all the things he would have been proud to see me do. In hindsight, however, I know that me merely existing, breathing, and living as happily as I can live would make him the proudest person in the world. Thank you.